Hello. Um, let's see, I was going to just... Yeah, I guess I'll try to do this one without the headset thing. Um, hopefully whoever that is will not keep doing whatever that is. <clears throat> so, I uh, just watched Jimmy Dore's uh, live show um, where he basically, you know, told the truth about Kyle Rittenhouse and how, you know, he was basically uh, defending himself. <clears throat> you know, this is what I got canceled on Twitter for by like, because, you know, I was on Twitter and most of my friends were like leftists, socialists and communists and stuff. But when I said that, you know, that Rittenhouse should be, uh, shouldn't be demonized basically i criticize people for demonizing him and for pretending he's like some white supremacist and whatever and i got totally canceled and all these people called me a racist <laughs> they said literally that I, i'm racist for yeah because i said uh well we should wait before we demonize him it just and it just was so hilarious to me how that how me refusing to take sides in a fight between white people and other white people made me racist but that's how that's the brain worms that sjw's have and like a lot of the twitter left has you know a lot of them they're really just like total sheep like they just follow whatever's like the crowd the is they're just like the that crowd um in the video with kyle where somebody's like that guy did the thing get him and they and all these like you know people start chasing kyle they don't they have no idea what who this guy is or what's going on but they just want to be you know badasses and and so they don't care like they don't need like um you know i mean i feel like i can relate slightly in that i was a you know, when I was a kid, I guess probably when I was like 13, 14, I had a little too much of that mentality where if somebody told me, oh, this guy did something to somebody and like, I didn't have the amount of integrity to like wait and see. And, you know, like that's something I, in retrospect, I know about when I was younger um, I was more gullible about stuff like that. So it's just that mob mentality. It's like, well, if your side says this happened, then, you know, you're always going to side with your side against anybody else. And, um, so, it's an organic, uh, Organic rum and coke or rum and cola. Um, so anyway, that something where, you know, I pretty much from the beginning was, you know, I haven't really changed my position about the Kyle Rittenhouse thing from the beginning. Because, you know, like I've always, I am, I support Black Lives Matter. I consider myself one of those BLM people and one of the, I consider myself Antifa. I've always supported BLM and Antifa, but that's not to say I just support every single person who claims to be BLM or Antifa. And honestly, I'm sure a lot of those psychos in that crowd knew jack shit about politics. You know, they just joined in like the guy uh, Rosenbaum or something, you know, he was like, beating his girlfriend or something or I don't know but then he just like went downtown and got involved in this shit there was no like there was like video of him like yelling at people and using the n-word and telling people to shoot him so there was no he there was no video of him saying anything political at all no it just seemed like somebody who was like a psychopath that knew there was a bunch of drama downtown, wanted to fuck shit up, and had a death wish. 
I mean, it seems like all these people, I mean, if you're going to chase after a guy with like an assault rifle, you basically have a death wish. And um, so, you know, the right is in is like, oh, look at these leftists, because, you know, some of these the the guys who were attacking him, who he shot were like, or at least one of them was a pedophile. And um, so they're saying, oh, look, this is what leftists are like. But at the end of the day, they're not even necessarily leftists. They could have just been people that uh, just, you know, they're just psychopaths that saw an excuse to, like, get crazy, you know? I mean, there's people that, there's people that'll do that. There's people that just like to riot and they don't care too much what it's about. Um, you know, there's a problem that like that in uh, Northern Ireland, like in Belfast and Derry and whatever. There's people who just love to love to riot, basically, and whatever it is, whether it's about a parade or about a something, they're all ready to go. They got all their petrol bombs and they know all the stores they want to loot or whatever um i'm not like saying they're the devil i'm just saying like uh you know it's it's silly to pretend that they're just like that everybody that's uh goes to some antifa blm protest is actually themselves like a hardcore leftists you know they might not be they might be somebody who doesn't really know or care or anything about leftism but they just see some drama and they're like yeah bring it on let's be, let's go extreme i mean that's a little of the vibe i was getting from those um so you know like anyway so jimmy Dore. I was wondering, like, I was, I was thinking, like, I was giving him credit for the fact that he wasn't covering the Kyle Rittenhouse thing because, you know, it's probably so much of leftist YouTubers are all like covering it in the SJW perspective and saying like, oh my God, Kyle is a evil white supremacist, yada, yada. So at least he wasn't doing that. So I was already like thinking like he was the good uh exception but then today he actually like covered it and even you know exposed the truth he showed like some one or two videos from uh that matt, <coughs> matt orfala had put together about it and um so you know like i lost yeah i lost friends over this straight up like on twitter i lost friends over it I think on Facebook, I might have lost friends over it. I know that, you know, I've seen one of my Facebook friends that's like, that's basically a Jimmy Dore fan and, you know, anti va or anti-mandate and, you know, pretty based on a lot of stuff. But even him, he was going full, like, partisan on this because he's like, you know, if you're going to come and defend this Kyle Rittenhouse, but it's like, I feel like at the end of the day, uh, I mean, yeah, I don't know. That, that guy's kind of all over the place. But uh, I'm hoping that this that Jimmy Dore's video will have a good impact because, you know, a lot of people on the left, they don't really know. They haven't seen all the videos and footage and they just have heard some this and that and uh like Jimmy himself, he admitted like up until recently, he just kind of assumed like, I mean, he didn't really get into it because he didn't know about it. Unlike these other people who don't know about it and get still like act like they do. But from what he had heard, he thought that this was some white supremacist guy who had just murdered some black people for no reason. And um, because that's like the way that's the way that they always portray it. Like they always try to like the media and the leftists and SJW, like the SJWs and shit libs. That's how they've been trying to portray it since day one is to try it. Cause the, the thing is any white person with a gun is treated by the shit libs as de facto white supremacist. Like that's the same with Boogaloo. Like they always call us, they always call Boogaloo white supremacists. 
based on nothing. I mean, there are there are white supremacist boogaloo's, and you know that is like I guess you could say like a, a sizable, or at least originally, or for at some point was a sizable um, faction of the boogaloo movement. But you know, even like anybody can can ascertain that like there's a lot of boogaloo people who are not white supremacists but that's just the go-to for everything everything is white supremacist if you like trump you're a white supremacist if you you know i mean i called somebody a white supremacist yesterday actually but that's that's another story. Actually, I'll tell that story now. But I just first want to give an ode to uh, give a nod to Jimmy and say like props for him, like covering the truth. You know, I'm sure he <laughs> he's just going to get a lot more of the same hate that he always gets for it. But and this will even piss off some new people. Um, but yeah, the other thing that I was going to talk about is. So in Santa Cruz here, there's like a freedom group that meets, that's been meeting for the last, I guess, since the lockdown started. And I never managed to actually meet up with them before because I heard, like, by the time I heard about it, it's like they were meeting up on some beach at night that was too far from me and I don't drive. And um, so... But finally, I managed to go because I found out that they were having meetings like nearby, um, you know, near my house. And so that's like kind of for the county, uh, the anti-mandate people for the county somewhat. And uh, so anyway, I went to their meeting last week and it was pretty cool. I mean, the woman who runs it, Ellie, seemed kind of bossy, but was like whatever it seemed like other than that it was a decent meeting and you know i was thinking maybe she's just rough around the edges whatever um and then you know i went with them to a protest on uh, in san francisco and at the golden gate bridge that was good <clears throat> and then and then i went to their meeting uh yesterday because it's like sunday meetings and uh before the meeting even started, really, when we were just kind of hanging out at the beginning, some guy there, James, um, basically, what was it? He was saying something about Black Lives Matter. And I was trying to interject some nuance into it. And I was saying, well, you know, like, there's, there's diversity, you know, like, Black Lives Matter is diverse and there's some people that are in it that are good, like the guys that the two speakers that we had that came to our anti mandate event uh the other day in San Francisco. They were two Black Lives Matter leaders that spoke you know, against the mandates and I was saying, Well, that's cool, but then there's other people in Black Lives Matter that are that my that are bad or whatever you know like that's my belief i think just like any or uh group or movement there's good and bad in it but um but this guy flipped out at me and he's like get the fuck away from me get the fuck away like this guy was very you know fighting hostility kind of like vibe and um so so I got pissed because this guy's like cussing at me out or out of nowhere. So I was like, fuck you, dude. And then he's like, well, fuck you. And then so I called him a white supremacist because I don't know why else he's like so much. He cares so much more about demonizing anybody who refuses to fully demonize Black Lives Matter than he cares about these mandates or children being poisoned, which is the whole reason we we're there to meet. Not to like have a stupid culture war, but this fucking psycho like because and then but then he like lunges at me like he tells me get the fuck out of my face get the fuck get the fuck out of here get the fuck away from me, um. So I so I I get away from him, 
And then he lunges at me and he starts like chasing me basically. Like, I mean, I could have just fought him, right? I'm sure I could have took him. But I just, you know, it was my second time at this meeting. So I didn't want to be the reason the cops come or the reason that it gets shut down or something. Whatever. I just, uh, you know, karmic for karmic reasons, I hesitated to just like knock his bitch ass out. Um, so I just kept backing up, but he kept lunging towards me more. And then the, the chick like Ellie, who's the, the leader, the pompous leader of this thing she's not even faced towards him she faces towards me and tries to like talk me down basically talk me into submission and say well this is why you need to agree with him because you clearly are not red pilled enough about black lives matter or whatever i'm like that doesn't fucking matter the point is you don't chase people you know like you don't assault people at a meeting when you're supposed to be like finding common ground you're supposed to be uniting against the elites you don't chase somebody just because they have a different view from you about like culture issues or like you know and it's like there, yeah there's a lot of the people who are so their hatred of blm is such a valuable part of their life like they would give up almost anything to hold on to that demonization of blm because somehow it forms like a indispensable part of their quote-unquote personality anyway so um so after the leader of this event like not only wouldn't tell him to back off from me but basically took his side and was basically berating me um helping him berate me I left, you know, and I looked around and, you know, not everybody had arrived yet, but there was already like 15, 20 people. Nobody said anything for me. Nobody said, and there was somebody else that was also helping him chide me. Some other chick, I think, or like some guy or I don't know who. So there was like three people against me. Nobody for me at all. I mean, granted, not maybe people didn't know what was going on or whatever, but it's kind of pathetic because we're supposed to be there, like, putting our house on the line for the community, and they can't even say a word when somebody's being chased and, and you know, basically, you know, in danger of assault right in front of their face. So anyway, I'm done. I'm not going to those things anymore. Um, I'm glad I found out now, you know, it's good to find out quick. Like you don't want to, you don't want to be like heavily invested in some group before you figure out that they're, that they don't even, they're, they won't even care if you're like in danger. Um, so anyway, that, and it's like, I already knew like a lot of them were super anti black lives matter, super anti socialist, anti communist, whatever. And I was okay with that. I knew that. I was like, okay, yeah, I understand. We're not here for that. We're here about these mandates. We're here, you know, we don't have to agree on everything else. But apparently that's not the case. We had to agree on everything or else get chased. I mean, honestly, I almost now, like, since, like, nobody nobody stood up for me nobody you know I almost wish i had just stood my ground and fucking knocked his bitch ass out but who knows then maybe i'd be like in jail or you know with the criminal justice system here maybe they'd all like vouch for him who knows but i mean i told him because i'm on like a a thread with him or like a group uh text with him and a bunch of them and so i told him i'm like if you want round two like for real like uh, you know anytime any place i just didn't want to fight him like in the middle of this meeting that it was like my second time attending but you know there's nobody i will back down from like uh in general <clears throat> so anyway that's uh and like I guess his big crime, my big crime was for calling him white supremacist. But it's like I don't know, dude. Is he a white supremacist or is he just like evil in some other way? I mean, what what is his reason that he 
hates me basically more than he cares about the cause that I'm trying to unite with him about. Like I'm trying to be there to uh, support freedom, but all he cares about is that, you know, I'm a leftist basically. And I'm not, I don't, that I support black lives matter and I support, you know, that's all he cares about. So that's not a, that's not somebody who was ever really like, a valuable comrade of any kind so good riddance you know um so you know it's interesting you know i had kind of like a premonition that that leader of it ellie was kind of like shitty but i was like trying i was hoping my premonition was wrong but you know, sometimes something brings it to a head early and then it's good because you find out the truth. And for me, I guess just being myself tends to bring everything to a head early. Um, but, you know, like I'm willing to work with people like just like those Black Lives Matter leaders who came to the event, came to the rally. I mean, I think I'm even more, you know um ecumenical than they are like i try to um you know i try to really like see the value in each group but that includes black lives matter and that includes antifa and that includes proud boys that includes boogaloo you know and honestly it's not hard to see the truth and the good and the bad in all these groups it's i i don't understand how like, I'm almost jealous of the skill with which people are able to ignore the good in all these groups and pretend that it's all just evil. It's all just Soros or Koch brothers or it's all, you know, like, um, I guess, you know, it must be nice to just be able to create your own reality and anything that doesn't fit in it, you just remove But yeah, I mean, people need to demonize, like, people like to have an easily identified target so they can direct their um, free-floating anxiety at it and their rage and whatever. Um, you know, it's like how, like, BLM is like this shadowy, evil communist organization that's, you know... Like, they don't understand what a movement is. Like, people, like, unfortunately, some people in the conspiracy theory world are so, like, autistic or something that they really can't fathom the concept of an organic movement. You know, like, they don't believe organic movements exist because everything that happens under the sun is controlled by, you know, the Illuminati or whatever. And so... If anybody does anything, they're doing it because of the Illuminati, basically. So if I hold a sign that says Black Lives Matter or says, you know, uh, that's against police m misconduct or something, I could only possibly be doing that because George Soros wants me to do it or something like that. The idea that somebody might just actually be against like police brutality or whatever, they they don't believe in that. They believe that's like uh, imaginary that like, people actually having organic like beliefs and like opposing the police and yeah, I don't know. It's fucking cringe. It's same with CRT. Like the way people need to like put a name and pretend that CR that there's some very like nefarious like very distinct um you know dogma known as critical race theory that's being foisted on us and you know it's just like highly imaginary highly cringe i don't know but it's a but it clearly fills a very big psychological need because if you try to fuck with people that have this belief uh, a lot of times, like, they will get really mad. They might actually chase you.
All right, so um, what else is going on? I don't know, really. I just, uh, I just don't, you know, I don't, like, I kind of understand how people are partisan shills and hacks, because, like I say, when I was a kid, like, I was a lot more gullible for a lot of stuff, so I guess I kind of understand that just like accepting what you're told and running with it but it's not uh it's not good you know like um it's gonna be the people that are willing to work together like like those black lives matter leaders that came down to our event and were willing even though they knew a lot of the people there were republicans and conservatives um they came anyway because they you know they agree on this issue and they're willing to like be the bigger people be the you know be the bigger man and like not be petty and like build bridges so those that's who's gonna inherit the earth if anybody is the people like that are willing to uh be bigger than the petty divisions and be bigger than their ego. Um, you know, whether it's the people, it's like the people who just go become completely stupid, like the leftists who just become completely stupid over Kyle Rittenhouse. Like they just lose their entire brain. Uh, and any fragment of a soul they ever had when it just comes to discussing Kyle Rittenhouse or the right wingers who do the same thing whenever they're discussing BLM or Antifa or Marxism, socialism, communism, etc. Um, you know, that's always going to be the death knell of popular movements is this kind of like cultish, uh, ignorance but uh but yeah i mean jimmy door is giving me some hope you know even though he's still kind of being anti-gun like a little cunt but <laughs> other than that he's um he's kind of showing the way hopefully for a lot of the left who a lot of them are a little like shit libs in disguise shit lib sjw's you know but yeah hopefully they could get red pilled more and hopefully this can help red pill some of the republicans who think like oh nobody to the left of center could ever like say the truth or you know side with us so uh you know like when jimmy met up with the boogaloo guy that was super you know anti-bigotry um you know jimmy does has been really playing that role in a in a wonderful way of building that real like broad solidarity and building bridges you know nationally and internationally so um so yeah all right take care everybody and uh Solidarity.